Okay, let's do some Python on hardware. Yay, it's Blinka time. Blinka time. Uh, first up, Morgan Stanley has a Morgan Stanley makerspace program, and uh, we posted up in our latest newsletter. Uh, they have a circuit playground, what circuit Python thing you're doing. So lots of kids getting hardware, able to fill their makerspaces with electronics so they can learn how to code. Uh, check and it colorful out. LEDs, look at it, it looks so yeah. cool. And if you want to check it out, um, they're not just putting this on a separate Twitter account. This is on twitter.com slash Morgan Stanley. So you know it's a big deal when the, the big companies are doing stuff with kids and code and makerspaces, and they use their main account, not like, you know, the, the, the name of the, the bank or whatever, it like yeah. gives, you know, no, this is, their, their, they're fully behind this, so Yay. very cool to see Morgan Stanley doing this. Um, next up, the latest issue of Hackspace Magazine is out. We have um, a lot of the articles posted on our site that you can go and read. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, if you subscribe, you can go and uh, use the Hackspace, uh, hack, hackspacemag.com cc yep. slash adafruit and subscribe but it's python on hardware and uh that's one of the big articles in there drew wrote it from um osh park and he loves it because it's like microcontrollers more. microcomputers everything is supported yeah and um they definitely have a lot of python code and projects in hackspace every month it's a monthly magazine so subscribe yeah they're coming to the u.s so check that out and uh in addition to all the python on hardware stuff in there and using Python to control LEDs. There's Design of Oz with Fusion 360, makes things with toothpicks, add audio to Raspberry Pi projects, and 3D print strong parts. Next up. Uh, this is kind of neat. If you've ever wanted to uh, get the measurements out of a caliper mm. and use them in some way, either to store them or do something with it with, a out, uh, with an external device, um, CircuitPython measures up. There's a CircuitPython library for parsing data out of a uh, Mitsutoyo, Mitsutoyo. Yeah. automatic instrument like calipers or micrometers. And it's this is great for especially if you're doing a lot of automated measurements. You don't want to have one person recording and one person, you know, measuring. You can just have it all happen automatically from your calipers. During Engineers Week, uh, DigiKey did a really neat thing. They had, um, and I'll just uh, show the video, and we'll just talk over it. They had a girls' night out for Engineering Week, and this year uh, they hosted one for all the young women in their area to increase interest in STEM. They learned how to program a circuit playground from Adafruit, that's us. They used MakeCode, they used CircuitPython, they used things to build uh, projects that they can keep for later, and the staff helped out. So this is a really good example of one of our partners uh, doing something that scales really. For us, we can't really do workshops in our space and all that, but this is something they did. So this is really neat to see. So thank you, DigiKey, for being such a great partner and very cool work and look at all these projects uh, that they were able to do. I love how these girls, like they have their own interests and backgrounds and experiences and so when they become interested in electronics or engineering, they're gonna come with yeah. their own you know, information and, and, and background and it won't just be like what they learned in school, it'll yeah. be like these kinds of events that give them inspiration to design new and interesting electronics. Next up, uh, on Hackaday, they had new part day and oh, the things you can do with a clue, so check that over on Hackaday. They uh, have a new part feature, and they had the clue on there. Next up, um, over on Osh Park, there is a post about Circuit Brain Deluxe, which packs Circuit Python into a one-inch square. Yeah, handy. Some other things that are happening. Um, this is something we've been noticing. This is a tweet from uh, Isaac Kelly. My first Hello World in maybe a decade, but maybe I'm finally around, uh, finally getting around to playing with Circuit Python. Uh, it's impressively straightforward and definitely the most pleasant code on microcontroller experience I had. That's what we were going for. Uh, we don't know this person. They just tweeted it out. We saw it. We saw it. This is neat because that's what we like to hear. Even if you haven't been doing a, any type of coding or hello world in 10 years, if you could do something um, this easy, this fast, super cool. Um, also, uh, this is maybe a more advanced engineer, maybe someone who's been doing this. And uh, this is from Jordan. Most of my firmware flashing experiences require specialized software and often serial cable. It's frustrating and error prone. For Circuit Python, you plug it in via USB and it shows up as disk. You copy a file to a flash to flash the new firmware. This is so simple and good. That's I have like six different DFU upload programs on my Windows computer, and they're all completely incompatible. <laughs> yeah. I listen to Lemoore's computer all the time. It goes. That's all it does. 
and you have to reboot sometimes. I know. Um, this is kind of cool. Cedar Grove's learning how to use the CircuitPython display I.O. Uh, first to make text and labels, then an animated battery monitor, sprite, and an automatic DST for the attached RTC real-time clock. Mm, this is a nice little display. Yeah. Uh, this is kind of neat. Bright wearables is Geek Mom. Uh, makes wearables and things that happen to use... Uh, Anywho, Geek Mom uh, has wearable clues, and uh, it's all working out now. So this is the clue that goes into the wearable of the breadboard, and it was a um, micro bit. Yeah, you get that um, that RGB LED is pointing at the color sensor, and so she's actually changing the NeoPixel based on the color sensor built into the clue, which is neat because there's all these sensors that the clue has that um, the micro bit does not. Yeah. You can do more advanced projects. Okay. Uh, next up, you can check out all the new feathers. Ladina, maybe you can talk about this. This is the um, upcoming super early, don't ask, it's not out yet, Feather M7 RT1011, designed by Arturo168. I can't remember the number of his name, or 182, uh, who's been uh, doing a lot with the IMX uh, NXP chipset. So this is uh, a, a very inexpensive but very powerful chip. It runs at 500 megahertz. Um, and we thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool to make this into a feather? Um, it's very, very fast, and you know we can um, run CircuitPython on it. We already have a build of CircuitPython and working on having the UF2 bootloader as well. Um, but basically what we wanted to do is try to get um, this like $1 chip onto a feather so we could get it onto the world, because I think a lot more people would use this chip if it was available. And uh, it's coming soon, 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 but um, very exciting four-layer board with a USB-C connector. Okay, and this is one of the new learn guides? Mm -hmm. This is a new guide from Brian. Uh, this is the um, STM32F405 Feather um, running CircuitPython with an OLED display and a, a pressure sensor with a port on it. And the port has a tubing connected to it, and so we can turn it into a sip and puff sensor. And uh, what's neat is that um, Brian did a really interesting structure where there's a callback system for different sip and puff strength. So if you have like a weak sip or a strong puff, you'll get a callback and then you can perform different functions um, based on um, what the pressure sensor measured. So this is for making alternative user interfaces, sometimes for accessibility, but also like Phil, you were thinking, um, you know, what if you had a puppet that you could control some of it using your mouth? Like there was that musician who would have like had yeah. a tube that went into his guitar. I can't remember the name of him off the top of my head. But um, so you can use the pressure of your mouth to, um, as a sensor, to read and control other mechatronics, robotics, what have you. Okay, and then just a little bit of an update. We have 214 libraries. So for many. Circuit Python. And even more contributed libraries. And don't forget, um, coming up pretty soon, the Open Hardware Summit is in March. We have uh, Circuit Python on the wearable watch badge. Correct. It is uh, made by Oshpark, SparkFun, DigiKey, and I think each participant will get one. Yeah. We also will have 3,000 clues at PyCon. You'll get a clue there. If you're at PyCon, we will have a clue for you. And that is the Python on Hardware News for this week. Python on joysticks. Yeah.